and welcome to Ali B's Kitchen. When it comes to Italian cuisine, the number one dish that most people think of is spaghetti and meatballs. A delicious classic, this dish is high in both calories and carbohydrates. Today I'm going to share with you my updated version of this classic, which you can eat any day of the week, guilt-free. So let's get started. Although pasta can be very satisfying, it really has very little nutritional value. So in order to pump up this dish's nutritional value and cut calories, we're going to substitute spaghetti for some spaghetti squash today. If you've never had spaghetti squash, it's a great vegetable to be familiar with. It has a high water content, therefore it is low in calories, however high in vitamin C and fiber. Probably the best thing about the spaghetti squash is how easy it is to prepare. All you do with spaghetti squash is literally no prep. You can just place them straight onto a baking pan and then pop them into an oven that has been preheated at 400 degrees. You leave the spaghetti squash in there for just one hour and then remove it, slice it in half, and use a fork to scrape out all the insides. They come out just in little strings, almost just like spaghetti looks, and it's really that simple. So I'm gonna pop this into the oven, and while this is baking, we can get started on our meatballs. The classic meatball is usually made out of a combination of beef, veal, and pork. In order to cut calories, we're going to use turkey today instead. Turkey is a much more lean meat, so it's much less fat. Therefore, we wanna use some bold flavors to really pump up the flavor on our meatballs. When making any kind of meatballs, you always wanna add the meat in at the end, first creating your base, so that way you don't have to overwork the meat that you're using, for example, turkey today, and you don't end up with uh, tough meatballs. So we're gonna get started with our base. I'm gonna start out with a little bit of onion. I'm using today about a pound of turkey meat. So um, for onion, I'm gonna add in about a third. When working with raw onions, you always wanna make sure to finely dice your onions. You don't wanna end up with big chunks of onions in your meatballs. So to our onion, we wanna add in a little bit of garlic. It's really up to you. I prefer my food to be a little bit on the garlicky side, so I'm gonna use two cloves. You may prefer to just use one. So to our aromatics, we're gonna add a little bit of parsley. Once again, with the parsley, you wanna make sure you finely mince your um, leaves up. That way that beautiful green color can be equally distributed throughout your meatballs. So next we're going to add in our um, breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna do about half a cup of breadcrumbs. It's gonna really depend on how moist um, the rest of your ingredients are. So you kinda wanna play with that amount, but it should be about half a cup. When using breadcrumbs, I like to use the unseasoned breadcrumbs, so that way you can add your own seasonings in and really control the flavor yourself. Next is gonna be a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese. Once again, about half a cup. And then just to add in a little bit of spice, we're going to do just a little bit of red pepper flakes. And then to cut through the meatballs, we're gonna use a little bit of ketchup here. I'm gonna do about a tablespoon. And then because we are using a lean meat, we wanna make sure that we still have a nice moist meatball. So to this, I'm just gonna add a little bit of sour cream. Once again, about one, one to two tablespoons here. So I'm just gonna combine our base. And don't forget to season a little bit of salt, a little bit of cracked black pepper. Okay, and then we are ready to add in the star of the show, the turkey. So at your uh, grocery, you may find that they have both light and dark turkey meat. You can really use whatever is available or your preference. I like to use a little mix of both, so that way we still get a little bit of that um, healthy fat in there. So I'm just gonna add this right in. And then for this, you really wanna use your hands and just make sure all the ingredients are fully combined. So now it's time to place these onto a cookie sheet. 
I like to use um, a little bit of wax paper on my cookie sheet just so there's um, a little something to catch all of the oils that come from your meatballs. So I'm gonna just do um, like two inch meatballs today. Really up to you. Just wanna make sure that there's enough room in between. Okay, so we're all set. I'm gonna pop these into a preheated oven with 375 and I'm going to leave them in there for about half an hour. You wanna make sure that you flip your meatballs halfway through so that way they brown evenly. So it looks like our spaghetti squash is just about ready, so I'm gonna check on that. Our spaghetti squash is out of the oven. You wanna be careful, it's gonna be a little bit hot. So you just wanna quickly Move it onto your uh, cutting board here. So now you're gonna see just how easy it is to prepare this vegetable. You just wanna take your knife and slice it right down the center. As you can see, the inside of the spaghetti squash is very much like any kind of squash or pumpkin that you might have eaten. It's got a little bit of seeds and a little bit of like sliminess in the middle that you wanna remove. So just take a spoon spoon out that part. And then you're ready for the good stuff. So to get out the rest of the squash, you simply take a fork and scrape the insides. It's so easy. And it comes out beautifully. It looks like you took a long time to get the squash to look like this, but luckily it's pretty simple. So now that our squash is ready to go, we're just going to add to it a little bit of pesto. I'm gonna use pesto today because it's just lighter and the colors and all of those bright flavors are really gonna liven up this dish. I've made my own pesto today, which consists of um, just very classic flavors, a little bit of basil, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, some Parmesan, a little bit of garlic, and then of course basil leaves. If you have a jarred pesto that you prefer, then always use that. That's just gonna save you a little bit more time. So I'm just gonna spoon some of this on here. And then we just wanna combine it. Mmm, and because the squash is still hot, you can smell all those flavors as soon as the pesto hits the hot squash. Okay, our meatballs should be ready to go, so let's take a peek. And they are nice and brown, so let's pull these out. All right, so why don't we plate our dish? I'm gonna grab a little bit of this spaghetti squash. Onto our plate here. And then grab one of these meatballs. Yum, these brown up really well. And of course, to finish off our dish, we want to end with a little bit of some shaved Parmesan. So I have some fresh Parmesan here. Gonna shave that right on top. So let's take a bite and see how we did. Mmm. Mmm. The freshness of the basil really lightens the entire dish, and it's a great contrast to the meatball, which is a little bit more hearty. Next time you're craving the classic Italian spaghetti and meatballs, try this updated lighter version. Thanks again for watching, and be sure to check out AllieBeastKitchen.com for recipes, videos, tips, and more.